From capitalism, a love story, to inside job, to the yes men, there's no shortage of films on the business world. Something Ventured, though, is different in tone. It tells the story of venture capitalism in the last half of the century. For starting point, for companies that we all know well, Intel, Apple, and Cisco. The film premiered on Tuesday this week in Austin, Texas at South by Southwest. I sat down with Paul Holland. He is a venture capitalist, a partner at Foundation Capital. He is also the executive producer of the movie. So I asked him why he started working on and later funded the film. For my initial vision on the film, I, I wanted to make the movie for the characters. Uh, many of the, the people in the film, both the venture capitalists and the entrepreneurs, are now well into their 80s. And my original notion was literally just to short, shoot a short video archive. It wasn't meant to be as big as it turned out to be. And I happened to be out at lunch one day with one of them, a, a, a gentleman named Bill Edwards, who began to tell me stories of the origins of the original uh, venture capitalists and the, and the investments they made in companies like Intel and Apple and in Genentech and Cisco and others. I found the story to be absolutely fascinating, uh, couldn't get it out of my mind, and then began to talk to other people about it. And that turned into an idea that has turned into the film that you're hearing about now, Something Venture. One of the people featured in the film is Sandy Lerner, the co-founder of Cisco, who was then pretty short order replaced after she co-founded Cisco. Do you feel like there's a difference between capabilities from an entrepreneur's point of view and then leadership skills that are needed to run on a company. Well, often we find that there's a there's a difference between the zeal and the and the energy that the entrepreneur brings and the passion as a founder of the company, and that passion can take the company so far. And, and then at times, what we find is that the company needs to what we would call scale. They need to be able to get to scale economics across their businesses. And at that time, we begin to look for a more uh, seasoned CEO who can take the company up to the next level. In the ideal world, we'd rather back the founder and have the founder go all the way through. But our job sometimes is to make a determination as to whether somebody is scaling along with the growth of their company. There does seem to be a nostalgic tint back to the 60s or the 70s in Silicon Valley. You've lived through, as you mentioned, 25 years. Do you see any comparisons between the development that was going on at that time and the scene now? We're in a very, very different industry today. At, in the time period that we focused on in the film, in the 50s and 60s and early 70s, there was approximately $60 million available across the entire range of people who called themselves eventually called themselves venture capitalists. It was a different industry. They were kind of like putting the seed stock in to go out and find the Fairchild Semiconductors in the, in the way that uh, Arthur Rock did and then have that turn into Intel to go find the Apple computers uh, that the folks like Don Valentine and others had done. So the industry is just much, much larger today. There are, there are many, many more venture capitalists. There are many more hundreds of billions of dollars at play. And there are many more entrepreneurs today.